Brian King here. I read a lot of statements, you know, articles or very empowering Facebook posts about living independently and how important it is to leave, live independently. But there are a lot of misnomers around what it means to be independent, okay? Someone saying, well, I want to be able to drive for myself, you know, get where I want to go, then I'll be independent. Well, does that mean people that are blind are not independent because they don't drive? You know, someone says, I want to be able to cook for myself, then I'm independent. Well, what if you're a quadriplegic and you need someone to come in to cook your meals? You getting the point here? There's more to independence than doing things with your own body. You know, I'm relying more on my sons to help me out because of my Ellers Danlos. What I've found, and this is really important to understand, and there's one young man in particular that is really a role model for this. His name is Jeremy Cecile Kira. He's the son of one of my mentors, Chantel Cecile Kira, who is a prolific author in the autism realm. Jeremy is profoundly impacted by autism. He's nonverbal. He has a lot of the stereotypical gestures of autism. He does a lot of rocking, a lot of stimming. He's also a very talented abstract artist. Jeremy has his own apartment, but he has a 24-hour rotating staff. Because of his fine motor difficulties, he needs help bathing and clothing and everything. Now, I'll be damned if I think Jeremy's not independent because he meets the one criteria that I believe is truly essential for independent living, and that is self-determination. The fact that he calls the shots, he makes the decisions. He says, this is the kind of life I want to live, will you help me? That's what it means to be independent, okay? There are a lot of people that, whether it's autism, you know, Asperger's, cerebral palsy, whatever it is, that by virtue of sensory problems or cognitive delays or physical disabilities need help from other people. So using this criteria of not needing help as a measure for independence is BS, okay, period. It's you calling the shots, you making the decisions, that's what it means to be an independent living kind of person. And while we're on the subject, Let's ditch the whole idea of independence. And I've talked about this in other videos as well. The real success is in interdependence. Can you effectively work within society, within a unit, you know, within your family, within your neighborhood, within your workplace? Can you work together as a member of a team? The more effectively you can do that, the more interdependent you are, the more fulfilling your life can be. But it begins with you knowing what you want, being able to communicate what you want, and rally people around that. Being a self-determined human being is the measure of independence or interdependence. So I want you to think about that because it's so critical for people with challenges. Because the system that we are being raised in, the public school system, they're always pushing that BS down our throats. Did you do it on your own? Did you do it yourself first? Well, go back and try it yourself before you ask me for help. That really drives home that idea that if you need help, you're screwing up. What a steaming pile of BS, as I've said a couple times. It's being able to decide what you want, who you need help from, so on, take action on those decisions, or recruit other people to help you take action on those decisions. we got to get past this nonsense that... Working alone is a measure of success because it never was, it never will be. I hope this has been helpful. If so, pass it along. Brian King here. We'll talk again soon.